When Pixio originally reached out asking if I would be interested in checking out a monitor from them, I had no recollection of who they were, although after a quick Google search, I was quickly reminded. They've had plenty of videos featuring them from much, much bigger channels, and those videos all typically started out the same, with the host saying you've likely never heard of this brand before. To avoid a similar trend, I will give a little bit of backstory to the company. Now, founded in 2016, Pixio was originally based out of Torrance, California, but today they operate on a global scale. Looking through their about page, they claim to offer the best displays at a reasonable, affordable prices, and and with the host become a greater part of the esports community. Now, this video will serve as a review of the monitor, speaking about the specs and what it's like to use in day-to-day -day tasks. However, the computer that we'll be using for testing will be a GPD WinMax 2 hooked up using Oculink eGPU dock. Diving right into it, unboxing is honestly nothing special. The monitor comes in a bright red box with no mention of specs to be found. However, the monitor we have here is the PX277 Pro, and inside the box we have a locking display port cable, the monitor, and the stand for it. Now, the stand itself is toolless and clips in with no drama. Now, we're offered with a decent range of motion, including tilt, height, and swivel. Now, it quite honestly is one of the more robust stands I've had for a monitor, but if you're not into that, it does have vase amount capabilities with a 100x100 pattern. The PX277 Pro boasts a 27 inch display with a resolution of 25 by 1440 and a refresh rate of up to 165 if you're using DisplayPort. Now the panel itself is IPS which typically will offer the brighter brightness and motion clarity and with this particular panel advertising one millisecond response times however the contrast is not as good as a VA panel might be. Now we do have 450 nits of brightness, HDR support although I honestly wouldn't recommend it, AMD FreeSync Premium support and when tested with Nvidia it does support G-Sync. Now to top it off we do have two built-in speakers which are just uh, okay. Now I would love to speak about the color accuracy however i'm not near enough qualified to speak in depth on this topic and what i will say though is you likely will need to mess around with the settings to get something a little bit more pleasing to your eyes uh, i found when playing certain games out of the box red and pink would kind of blur together sometimes however after installing the proper drivers and tweaking some settings i was able to get what i would call a more reasonable color accurate picture to my eye now with this being gaming focused monitor i would say that as long as colors are within the ballpark of what they're supposed to look like people will be happy now, my absolute favorite feature of this monitor is the fact that it's also a dock. You could even go as far to say that it's a dock with a screen strapped onto it. Now, the PX277 Pro is equipped with a KVM. Now, KVM stands for Keyboard Video Mouse, and what this means in its simplest terms is that you're able to manage multiple PCs with a single monitor, keyboard, and mouse. There are many different types of KVMs, however, the one we have here is USB-based, and in order to get it up and running, you'll have to hook up an uplink cable to your main PC, then plug in your keyboard and mouse to the USB port found on the monitor, and as an added bonus, there is an RJ45 Ethernet port. Now, once your peripherals are all hooked up, you can then switch between your uplink or your main PC and then other display ports. Now, the only caveat is the main PC needs to be powered on as well. Now, if you use the HDMI or display port, they will act as intended, but if you use the USB-C port to connect to your display, it will also supply 65 watts of PV charging, making this the perfect monitor for docking handhelds, even if the monitor is 1440p. This is my first monitor with a KVM switch and a USB-C input for display, and I can confidently say I will never go without again. Now, this monitor only supports two USB ports, and if you need more than that, I would highly suggest you pick up a dock like this one from Ugreen. The Revo Dock 211 will add three additional USB-A ports, one USB-C, and another for PD charging pass-through. Two HDMI ports, gigabit Ethernet, audio mic combo, and a full-size plus micro SD card slots. If you're looking for a dock, Ugreen will likely have one that suits your needs whether you'll need a robust dock such as this or a simple one you can throw in your pocket be sure to check them out at the links below with all the technical out of the way, driving this monitor is my GPD WinMax 2 2023. This has an AMD 7840U and 64GB of RAM, running at 7500 megatransfer per second. The device on its own has an HDMI port and two USB-C ports capable of video out. However, there is an Oculink port. For those that don't know, Oculink is an extension of PCIe and it stands for Optical Copper Link. In this implementation, it is PCIe Gen 4x4 and this allows for 16GB of transfer per second. Uh, this this should be able to sustain many cards, save for the upper echelon of 4000 and 7000 series cards. Oculink for now has an advantage over Thunderbolt, but when Thunderbolt 5 rolls around, uh, the next gen of Oculink should surely follow. Now, with this type of eGPU being more uh, niche than the Thunderbolt variety, it is very much a DIY type of deal. 
Now I will try my best to list all the parts used, mainly the boards. However, before I made this video, I acquired three different types of Oculink boards, two of which were powered by ATX and the third being powered by SATA. The one I'm going to use here is the GKO one from Osmeta. This is highly regarded as the, a very good board in the eGPU community. And although there are many different others and likely better at this point, this is the one I have and it does work as reported. Now, acquiring this back when I did, it was a pain in the ass. I had to get it from Superbuy, and this is a site that seemingly acquires stuff from uh, Chinese-only marketplaces and then forwards them to you. Those sell things like t Taboo, Tabao, I don't know, and whatever other places. So this is my first time using a site like this, and honestly, it kind of sucked. After following the links online from what people said were legit uh, boards, I had to try to decipher which option did what, as Google Translate wasn't helpful all the time. What I thought I had purchased was the board, cable, shroud, and like kind of mounting kit for the PSU and GPU. What I received was just the board and cable. Now, after making a complaint before getting it shipped to me, the seller said basically kind of too bad that the no, that's what I ordered. It very well could have been my fault, but uh, I swear I was clicking the correct boxes for the correct variant, at least I thought. Once I got the boards, I sat on them for quite a while. Recently though, I acquired an MSI 650 watt power supply, which should be enough to power my 4090 and anything beneath it, as well as an ITX uh, Plexi board mounting solution. However, I could not really make it work with the smaller kind of PCB of the Oculink board. So as such, I sprung for a more expensive black and red metal one that had sliding slots and everything. So this kit is meant for an ITX as well. However, it worked with my ATX PSU and the board. Mainly what I wanted was a good support mechanism for heavier GPUs. You can make your own solution as well, but this suits my needs just as well. Picking a GPU is a little bit more tricky. For this setup, I wanted something that was more powerful than the 780M GPU included, obviously, but not so much that it would get bottlenecked by the PCIe limitations or the 7840U itself. Originally, I had found an RTX 2080 Ti for 250k Canadian dollar ronies, uh, which was an absolute steal for the card. This honestly would have been my kind of dream setup for it. I had, with 11 gigabytes of VRAM, would have been powerful enough for 1440p and some light 4K, while having access to DLSS upscaling. How However, upon getting it and powering it up, it would not display out, so I was kind of upset about it and just looking forward to using it. But after returning it, I was not able honestly to find another one for that price, so I found an RX 6600 for $200. Definitely not nearly as good of a deal, or even close to the performance level of the 2080 Ti. What this card does have is resizable bar support, and a much healthier dose of support from its parent company. The RX 6600 may be a low-end 1080p card, however it has 8GB of VRAM and is still kinda sorta capable at 1440p, and with fluid motion frame support and FSR3, we're able to get more performance out of it we wouldn't be able to otherwise have. Yes, there are frame gen mods adding support for older uh, RTX cards that get frame gen, but I don't want to have to live my life by waiting for a paid mod to give me support for something that should just be available. Either way, if you are to replicate this setup, I would suggest to weigh your needs, and I think the perfect card for this type of setup would be an RX 6700 or 6800 class card on the NVIDIA side, maybe a 2080 Ti 3070 level. Now, this would allow for solid 1440p performance, potentially maxing out the refresh rate of this Pixio monitor, and if we're hooking this eGPU up to a 4K TV, you would be able to get the console-like performance in both instances. The more VRAM you can get, though, the better. Always check relative performance charts. Now, speaking quickly about setting it up, ensure you uh, change your Oculink speed accordingly. You can either force uh, Gen 4 or use Auto. I found no difference between using the two when you're using a PCI Gen 4 card, but when using PCI Gen 3, use the Auto. Now, with the GPD Win Max 2, while in BIOS, you can press Alt F5 to unlock advanced settings, and here you can find PCI settings to enable above 4G decoding and resize bar. This allows for the CPU to access the entire frame buffer on the GPU, otherwise it would be getting it in small chunks. With AMD, this is under SAM, or smart access memory. Aside from that, there's not much else needed for the AMD GPUs. If you are running an NVIDIA GPU, you will need to run a tool to fix Air 43 bug, and it's a super quick fix that can be done with the GPU hooked up. I will leave a link for it in the description below. Using the monitor is quite enjoyable. Again, I need to reiterate that I'm no color science expert and do not do any sort of post color correction in my videos, even though I likely should. 
For reference, I use an LG C1 48-inch OLED TV as my main monitor. This TV can provide proper and excellent HDR experience. Moving from that 4K kind of beast of a TV monitor to this budget monitor was a lot easier than anticipated. I'm of the opinion that 120Hz is all that most will need for a solid gaming experience, but when moving from the LG C1 120 to the Pixio 165, there was a noticeable improvement. Now, in typical office work, video streaming, and other daily tasks, the monitor is quite a treat. The 1440p resolution ensures that the text, both big and small, are super sharp and clear, as shown in this monitor testing web app. I don't personally think you would have an issue using this monitor for spreadsheet and coding work. Now, in gaming, there were no complaints as long as you stay within the monitor's VRR range, which is 48 to 165. Motion was quite smooth, and there was some blurring at hyper speed, although I don't think there will present much of an issue. Uh, you can play with the monitor's overdrive settings here, however, I found that the default balanced mode that worked the best. Now, there is honestly not much to say about gaming on it. It didn't feel like jelly to use and my deaths in games were very much my fault and not the monitors. When comparing it to the LG OLED, yes the LG OLED is much better, mainly in my opinion due to the HDR. You can activate HDR on this display, uh, although I never recommend it on something that doesn't support at least 800 nits of brightness, and even then the brighter the better. One side note that I only just remembered, there is an RGB light on the back of the monitor. You can turn it on or off, but you'll have no specific color control. Speaking for the looks of the monitor, this would not look out of place in a business environment with the light off. Gaming with the setup proved to be quite useful. When using the dock supplied by Ugreen, I was able to plug into my WinMax 2 and hook up my keyboard and mouse and speakers. Although the monitor does have speakers, they are very, very quiet. I opted to plug my power directly into the WinMax 2 as I wanted to ensure that the device was getting full power and amperage. When setting up, I decided I wanted to have the WinMax 2 tented for the most cooling capabilities as well as taking up the least amount of space possible. Now, once powered on with the drivers installed, it works just as any other gaming desktop would, with the exception that we are using a lower powered laptop class CPU. This actually proves to be our downfall in some games, but more on that later. Keeping everything in Full HD or 1080p, the setup is quite competent and we are able to play medium to high settings while getting 60 FPS in most games. In the most recent uh, CPU heavy games such as Cyberpunk or Starfield, no matter the resolution, we are always going to be limited by the 7840U even if we strap a 4090 onto it. Sometimes we will be brought below the 60 FPS mark due to the 7840U, although not for long in most cases. If you're using upscaling technology such as FSR2, be aware that they do increase CPU uses as well, so if you are getting low FPS and turn on or lower FSR, uh, you will get the same or worse performance. Frame gen is one way to get around the CPU limitation. Now, one of my favorite games to play currently is The Finals. I've shown this on the channel in the past, but for those that don't know, it's a multiplayer shooter with heavy environmental destruction. It includes ray tracing at its core, and when enabling RT with the setup, the 6600 is brought to its needs, no matter the game that you're playing. Uh, even, honestly, Doom Eternal. Then that thing can run on a potato. Now... When playing with an RTX 4090, the output FPS is very similar in this game, You're getting about like 50 to 60 FPS, maybe 70 when there's kind of really nothing going on. Uh, but when we turn on frame gen on the 4090, this kind of instantly alleviates that CPU bound nature of the, of the 7840U, and the FPS will shoot up to 165 and above, maxing out the refresh rate of this monitor. Now, even without RT enabled, it is a very CPU heavy game, and similar limitations will be felt without any sort of frame gen. That is the crutch of these devices with Oculink. Yes, the CPUs are more powerful, but modern games at high refresh rates are just not best for the task. As such, I would recommend you instill a frame rate lock, even though we have a VR display. I would find it more jarring going from a high, high refresh rate back straight down to a 60 and below. If we're using this setup on a TV, absolutely lock it in at 30 or 60, and otherwise, if you're on a higher refresh rate, I would say maybe aim for 120. But when paired specifically to the PX277 Pro, it's quite honestly handheld friendly, with it being more enjoyable with an eGPU. This type of setup is a lot of people's dreams, I would imagine, having a handheld for gaming on the go, then when at home, you can kind of dock it to a TV or high refresh rate monitor but having more power with the included kvm this could also be quite the little workstation Wrapping this video up, we'll get into the pros and cons of the monitor. For the pros, we have quite a lot. It has robust I.O., KVM support, and USB-C display input, which also provides 65 watts of power. On paper, this is the perfect display for handhelds. However, keeping in mind that not everyone will have an eGPU for their handheld, getting a 1440p monitor and using something that cannot fully power it 
could prove to be less than an enjoyable experience. Even with technology such as FSR, RSR, upscaling a 720p or even 1080p image on a 1440p monitor can look a bit messy. Luckily, Pixio does seem to offer a robust lineup which includes 1080p options. The image presented here is clear and smooth and the motion is quite fluid. Although not absolutely perfect, you'd likely have a hard time picking out the flaws at such high frame rates. Colors look okay, but I know there are more color accurate displays out there, but gamers typically don't care as long as it looks just okay. HDR support may as well not be included as it cannot achieve the proper brightness levels, nor does it have near enough good contrast to support it. The panel is IPS, which gives great viewing angles and good brightness levels. I could keep going, but honestly, when looking at its price range of monitors, there are cheaper. However, at the $300 kind of price range, this packs in quite a little bit of tech and a great display. Looking at brands like Kuri or Scepter, yes, they come in cheaper. However, the displays found there are generally of less quality. At the end of the day, you will need to do your own research in your own market as prices will vary wildly. For instance, I can find the Pixio brand on Amazon Canada. However, on the state side, you will need to purchase directly through their site. There are more well-known brands available at this price point like Gigabyte or Asus, but they are generally will lack like the KVM or even the USB-C support. So take it for what you will. In conclusion, the Pixio monitor and brand itself does seem to be of high quality and can be found at some attractive price points, although I cannot speak personally to other models. Setting up and hooking up an eGPU solution is honestly quite fun and it feels a little skunk works. Going above and beyond what is traditionally capable with these handhelds and taking it into a grander scale. Turning a mini PC into a full-fledged desktop could be the future of gaming. Instead of just parting out and building a super small form factor case, you could have your kind of like GPU, monitor, peripherals, whatever, all at your desk. And then when you get home, you can take your small little work or school device, hook it up, enjoy some high fidelity gaming. Lenovo even showed this in their ThinkBook 14 lineup. So if you want to know more about Pixio or Ugreen and the products used, please look into the description below. If you were hoping for more performance numbers in the eGPU setup in the 4090, don't worry, I'll be making more videos on that in the new future that will be solely geared towards that. So if you want some suggestions or games that you want me to cover, stuff like that for oculink setup please let me know and leave them in the comments below now beyond that if you want more join up in handhelds united discord where you can find myself and fellow handheld youtubers as always thanks for watching and interacting both good and bad and have a great day